today the topic that we are going to cover is the significant significant figures in product so we have to study significant figures in product in product division and power last time we studied the rules for significant figures for plus and minus now today we have to study the rules for product division and power now answer of product division and power will depend on the least significant least significant data uh students whatever i'm writing you have to copy it with me now first of all rules for significant figures in product in division and in power secondly we must know that when you write answer of a certain product division or power then the answer depends on the data set which is least significant and the rule is that the significant the significant figures in the answer will be either will be either equal to the least significant data or one significant figure or one significant figure more than the more than the least is allowed so basically when you multiply two numbers you divide two numbers or you go for power of a number then the significant figure of the answer should be according to the least significant data now what is the rule the answer should be there whose significant figures will be either equal to the least significant data or they will be equal to or they will be one more than the least significant data now for example if we write data and significant figures of
the answer. So for the given data, what will be the rules for the significant figures? Number one, let's suppose you have to multiply 2.3. It is just for example, it is length. And the width is just for example, 5.000. And the height is just for example, 1, 2, 3, 9, 7. Now you have length, width, and height. And generally, you know, length is greater. However, in this question, you have different values for length, width, and height, and they, they are by convention, just for example. Then, you see, the question is about multiplication. Basically, forget about length, width, and height. You have three numbers which are to be multiplied. 2.3, 5.000, and then you have 12, 3, 9, 7. 2.3 has two significant figures. 5.00 has four significant figures. And 12397 has one, two, three, four, five significant figures. Now out of all of the all of them, which one is least? Obviously, two significant figures is least significant figures. Now by principle, the answer can have answer can have either two significant figures or it can have three significant figures. As one significant figure extra is allowed. So when you multiply these three numbers, the answer should be should have either two significant figures or it should have three significant figures. It will follow the least significant data. Now, second example. Uh, purpose here is not uh, uh, multiplying or getting the answer. The purpose is to understand the rules for significant figures when you multiply numbers. Now, let's suppose you have to multiply some values to get an answer. Uh, a quantity X is calculated by multiplying, let's suppose 2.45 into 12, and it is divided by eight. And these are the three data values. Now you see 2.45 has three significant figures. 12 has two significant figures and eight has one significant figure. Now out of all the numbers, eight is the least significant data. So significant figures of the answer will depend on the least significant data that is eight. So we can say that the answer The answer the answer can have the answer can have either one significant figure or two significant figures are also acceptable. So in case of multiplication, power, and division, either you follow the least significant data or you write one significant figure more than the least significant data. Here, if you write one significant figure, then it is equal to the data value with least significant figures and that is eight. So the answer, if you write one significant figure, then you are exactly following the significant figures equal to the least significant figures. If you write two significant figures, then you're writing one significant figure 
more. Then you're writing one significant figure more than least. So you, you will either write significant figures equal to the least significant data or you'll write one significant figure more. Now, what are the conventions and rules, typical conventions about significant figures? Let's look for the conventions. Conventions and rules and rules for significant figures. Conventions and rules for significant figures. There are some conventions and rules that you have to understand. First of all, all the digits from one to nine. When we say all the digits from one to nine, we mean non zero digits. When we say all the digits from one to nine, it means non zero digits. So all the digits from one to nine, that is non zero digits. are always significant. So one thing is that all the digits in a number from one to nine, which are non-zero digits, they are always significant. They're always significant. Zeros present in a number may or may not be significant. So it is the zeros which are ambiguous or which are to be studied whether they are significant or not significant. However, digits from one to nine are out of debate. They are present in a number when they are given by an instrument. So all the digits from one to nine, which are called non-zero digits, they are always significant. They can never be insignificant because they are always given by the instrument. It is a zero which are sometimes applied while converting the unit. So when you convert a bigger unit into smaller unit, you apply some zeros. So zeros may be significant or they may not be significant. What are the conventions? When you take zeros significant and when you take them uh, to be insignificant or what are the conventions that you use to mention whether a number contains significant zeros or insignificant zeros? Now we will study the rules one by one. Number one, zeros which zeros which appear before zeros which appear before a non-zero digit are always in significant. So the zeros which appear before a non-zero digit, they are always insignificant. And what is meant by before? Basically we are saying that zeros zeros on the left of 
a non zero digit or in significant so all the zero that appear before a non zero digit they are insignificant for example acha we have studied two rules the first rule is all the digits from 1 to 9 are significant they are always significant zeros present in a number may or may not be significant and uh, the first thing about zeros is the zeros which appear on the left side of a number or before a number they are always significant this is the rule now what about let's give some examples for that let's give some examples for zeros that are present before a number now let's suppose you have a number 0 0 0 You have a number zero zero zero, and then you have you have a number zero अच्छा यू हैव अ नंबर जीरो 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 वन टू फोर लेट मी क्लियर द नोटबुक फर्स्ट देन वील मूव ऑन अच्छा यू हैव अकॉर्डिंग टू द फॉलोइंग एग्जांपल यू हैव अ नंबर Zero, 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 one, two, four, eight. Now the principle is that these three zeros, they are in significant. Now, if you ask the reason why are these these zeros insignificant, the reason is that. insignificant as they are before or on the left of a non zero digit this was a number without a decimal point <clears throat> now let's suppose you get a number with decimal point and what would be the rule for zeros in that number you have 0.000125 what is the rule for these zeros so the zeros which are before a non zero digit they are always insignificant so they are meaningless basically these zeros are in a number to determine the place values of first non zero digit so these zeros are always insignificant as they are on the left of the first non zero digit here i may ask a question if i ask you what is the purpose of these 3 or 4 or 5 whatever zeros what is the purpose of these five zeros the purpose of these five zeros is as far i can understand 
the purpose of these five zeros is to determine the place value of this one so if we remove these zeros if we rem remove these zeros what will happen just for example if these zeros are removed the only thing that is the problem is that the place value of this one will change so the zeros on the left of a non zero digit are only there to determine the place value of the first non zero digit so for the sake of understanding you must know that if you have a number 0.0005475 then actually these zeros are not significant basically you have to treat them as zero point dash 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 five four seven so these places they have no place value and they are just there to give the a place value to five so if i ask you what is the purpose of these dashes then these dashes are first dash second dash third dash is to tell that fifth is the fourth decimal now if we put in instead of dashes if we put zeros one two three zeros if these three zeros are not there then the place value of five will not be clear so because of these three zeros place value is of 5 is the fourth decimal so the purpose of these three zeros is to determine the place value of the first non zero number that is 5 so in simple words if you get zeros before a number like these zeros then these zeros are there these zeros zeros are to tell that in the given unit here what is meant by given unit maybe your number could be an amperes so given unit is amperes so these zeros are there zeros are these zeros before a number are to tell that in the given unit first non zero digit that is one one is one is at fourth decimal place so in the units of ampere the first one that you have it is there at the fourth decimal okay uh, sorry it is at the i think fifth decimal not fourth decimal so the first one is at the fifth decimal and the zeros four zeros are there to tell that one is at the fifth decimal in the units of ampere that's why these zeros are not significant so for example if you convert unit if you write this number from ampere to milliampere 0.000, .000 zero uh one two four seven ampere if you convert it to milliampere then you have to multiply it with thousand now let's suppose you multiply this number with thousand then it would become zero point then it would become zero point zero one two four seven 
Now you see the zeros have been eliminated by converting the unit. So the zeros which are eliminated by converting the unit, they are never significant. Significant zeros can never be eliminated from a number. They will always be here. Here when you convert the unit, the zeros have been eliminated. So the zeros are insignificant. That's why, that's why we say that the given zeros before a number, they are always insignificant. They are meaningless. They are just there because of a wrong unit being used. If you change the unit, the zeros are, you see, they are eliminated. So they are to give the place value to the first non-zero number. Now, this is the rule for zeros which are before a number. Now, zeros which are after a non-zero digit. Second rule, if zeros, if zeros are present if zeros are present between two non-zero digits then they are significant. Now, if you get some zeros which are present between two non-zero digits, then those zeros are always significant. Let's suppose you have a number 5001247.9. How many significant figures are there? Now, here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has eight significant figures. Now here the zeros are, these two zeros are, they are significant because they are between two non-zero digits. They are given by the instrument and even after the conversion of unit, they will not be eliminated. Now these zeros are significant. You have a number, 5.000125. Now, what about these zeros? You see, these zeros appear, these three zeros, they appear between non zero digits. So, these three zeros are significant. Whenever you have zeros which are between non zero digits, they're always significant. And as a result, how many significant figures are there in this number? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the given number has seven significant. So the given number has seven significant figures. So the given number has seven significant figures in it. So the zeros are significant. So when you have zeros between two non-zero digits, they are significant. Now rules for zeros, which are on the right of the digit, right of a digit. First of all, by convention, if the number has no decimal point and it's very important if a number has no decimal point then zeros written on the right and then zeros written on the right hand side 
of non zero digits will be in significant so if the number has no decimal point then the zeros which we write towards right hand side of a non zero digit they are insignificant and their reason is uh, is using a smaller unit now let's suppose if you have a number 5000 milliampere you see there is no decimal point in this number the number has no decimal point and three zeros are on the right of this non zero digit now what is the principle by principle these three zeros they are in significant which means that they were not given by the instrument now if you convert unit to ampere then this current would become 5 ampere so these zeros which are on the right of a number uh, they are here they are insignificant because the number has no decimal point so if you write zeros on the right of a number without putting a decimal point then the zeros are insignificant now if you get some zeros in a number on the right hand side and the number has decimal number has the decimal point if the number has a decimal point then zeros on the right hand side are always significant now if you get decimal point in the number then zeros on the right hand side of non zero digits they will be significant let's suppose you have a number 50.000 now you see you have a decimal point now here you have a decimal point now because of this decimal point all the digits all the zeros are significant all these zeros were given by the instrument so all of them are significant so the zeros that you write in a decimal number decimal point number on the right hand side they are given by the instrument otherwise you will not write them so when you put a decimal point all the zeros on the right hand side of a number will become significant let's suppose you have a number 5000.1 uh, sorry 5000.0 now because of this decimal point you see here you have a decimal point so whenever you see a decimal point the zeros on the right side of the number they will become significant so these zeros they are all of them they are significant so the zeros that you wrote on the right hand side of the number they are significant here now let's revise rules in one go uh, you have to tell the significant figures of a number number and then you have significant figures now let's start just for example if you have a number number 1 you have a number 
one two five now the digits which are significant should be ticked and the digits which are insignificant should be crossed non zero digits they are always significant and zeros on the left side of a number they are insignificant so here you have three significant figures the zeros are not significant number 2 you have a number 0.000125 and then two zeros now you get a decimal point when you get a decimal point the zeros which are after non zero digit these two zeros are on the right side of this non zero digit they will become significant so because of this decimal point the zeros which are on the right hand side of a non zero digit of the non zero digit they will become significant and one thing zeros which are on the left hand side they can never be significant so zeros which are before uh, a non zero digit uh, or you can say that they are on the left side of non zero digit they can never be significant so here you have 1 2 3 4 5 significant figures so this number has five significant figures these are the digits which are significant rule number 3 you have a number 1 2 5 0 1 2 5 0 0 and you see the number has no decimal point the number has no decimal point now by principle if decimal point is not present then zeros which are following the non zero digits will be insignificant so zeros which are after non zero digits or on the right side of non zero digits these four zeros they will become insignificant because the number has no decimal point so how many uh, sorry they should be crossed they are insignificant now these three numbers are significant and this number has obviously three significant figures example number 4 if you have number 5000125000 now you see you have some zeros between first of all the number has no decimal point this number has no decimal point now what are the rules the rules are that these non zero digits are always significant and the zeros present between two non zero digits which are in between they are always significant the zeros which are on the right side of non zero digits are insignificant if the decimal point is not there so in total it has 1 2 3 4 5 6 seven significant figures so this number has seven significant figures example number 5 you get a number 500.00 now a decimal point is present as you can see when a decimal point is present then zeros following the non zero digit will become significant now all of them are significant and the number has five significant figures so these zeros will become significant rule number 6 you have a number 5000 and you put a decimal here when you put a decimal here just for example if you write 5000 without decimal if you write it with decimal even if the if there is nothing after the decimal still the decimal has impact when you put a decimal you are telling that these three zeros they were noted by the instrument and now they are significant now they are significant now this number has four significant figures and this number in this number these zeros are not significant they were not given by the instrument only five give was given by the instrument so when the number has no decimal point the zeros which are present they were not given by the instrument and as a result and as a result this number has obviously one significant figure so these are common rules for significant figures in the next class we'll write conventions for operators plus we understood it now we are writing the notes 
in the next class we'll start from this point uh, take care students khuda hafiz